call the Public Works uh, Parks and Rec Committee meeting to order. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes of the prior meeting? Motion by, made by Supervisor Frazier, seconded by Supervisor McDonald. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, carried. Okay, with that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I don't believe I've heard from Justin Kanye, so he's not here. Okay. Uh, first thing up, I have our salmon stocking program. We did uh, the first week of October. Uh, we went by boat this year to help give a fish a little incentive to get out deeper waters. It's supposed to be better for the program, so the LGA and the uh, DEC helped us. Uh, we took them in at seven and a half inches and released them at, at 10 inches. So we had approximately two and a half inch growth this, this spring. So heritage strain we also did with uh, New York State DC. That's a fall program we've been doing for several years now. We were able to raise 11,240 what they call Horn Lake Fingerling. It's a wild strain that belongs in the Adirondacks. They were released at 4.2 average. I've included a graph on page one of our total update of our whole entire year including uh, spring stocking, salmon stocking, and uh, wild strain. A quick breakdown of salmon was 2,961, rainbow 13,633, brook 10,253. The wild strains, which includes another stain that we, we uh, actually do for the state also, we do not raise, is uh, little tuffers. So a total of 21,489. And any questions? So they were stocked all throughout Warren County? Throughout Warren County waters, correct. Yep. With the help of the state. And the when they do the wild strain, they dictate like a, a certain pond that maybe be reclaimed or, okay. or whatnot. It's all remote. They usually do it by either backpack or helicopter. That is not truck access. So either walk them in or fly them in. And it's a natural program that we're doing because we're considered a cold water hatchery. We are like only the one, only ones that do it. And we will start again here in November. They'll go back in, strip the eggs, bring them back to us here at the middle of November, and we'll start the program all over. Uh, the next up, I'll turn it over to Mr. Tennyson. Uh, we received a letter from Warrensburg Bike Bill <coughs> about his agreement. So we uh, included this letter just to keep the committee apprised that Mr. Zipro would like to extend his agreement further than what's in the, the current um, uh, resolution authorizing the agreement. So I, I haven't been able to speak with him uh, directly, and he is now out of, he has gone south now for the winter. So as soon as I can talk with him again, I'll come back to the committee. But he's, he's trying to bring uh, larger vendors to the event. And he feels that extending the term of the agreement uh, would give them confidence that the event is going to continue on. So um, this has come up a couple times, as you know. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And the um, EPW agenda? Sure. Okay. Uh, First few resolution requests are all relating to uh, the same project. This is H353 bridge asbestos abatement and painting project. Uh, the first resolution request is on page one. This is to amend the grant. This is to receive the phase of the grant for the actual construction and construction inspection for the project. So you see the attached um, state DOT agreement. This is a federally project. <coughs> the next resolution request on page 7 is simply to increase the capital project for that amount. And then on pages 8 and 17 are two uh, new contracts. The first is for uh, Camp Dresser McGee Smith. They are the engineers on the project. And this is to cover their construction inspection portion for the project. And then also on page 17 is a request for a new contract. Uh, the, the work is going out to bid and we've got a bid due date of November 17th so we should have by then we should have the, um, the name of the contractor. So these all of these are federal aid project um, um, all related to the same H353. Okay. We're going to get it on the floor. Somebody like to 
Supervisor Frazier, second by Supervisor McDonald. Okay, discussion? It, it's in the town of Stony Creek and Jasper. Because <coughs> <coughs> I thought we were going to identify yeah, the town where the bridge is. Yeah, it says here on page six. Yeah. Uh, towns of Johnsburg and Stony Creek. Creek. Do you know which bridge? I, I'm, I'm drawing a blank right now off the top of my head. Must be one that uh, borders O2. Frank, do you happen to know? It's three bridges, right? right. There's three, oh, three bridges. numbers. It's multiple bridges. Oh, it's multiple bridges. Right. Okay, but I thought we were going to identify the bridges Yeah. next time. You know, next time, can we just put what town and what which the bridge is called. Thanks. Is there any other discussion? Okay, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, carried. Okay, on page 18 is an increase to capital project. One through 18. On page 18 is an increase to capital project. This first is second. for H331 County Bridge Projects. This is our local bridge work that we do each year. Uh, this was budgeted money that uh, the funds are sitting in D9950. That's our transfers capital project. Um, this is for the Patton Aram Road Bridge up in town of Bolton. So this is to move money into that project. And I've got some photos I'll send around here of our, where the bridge is at right now. Yeah, that, moved, that, that was moved by Supervisor Sokol, seconded by Supervisor Frazier. Sure. <laughs> okay, now. Question, is that why all that sand is piled up at the foot of uh, the Payton Dairy Road there as you're coming down? There's some other work going on up in that, in that oh. area, but um, we wouldn't be using sand on our project. Well, because it's, I mean, it's just this huge pile and then it looks like concrete, almost like huge concrete. So there, that has nothing to do with the project you know, you're the doing. No, the concrete blocks are likely for our bridge. Those are abutments. Okay. Those are precast abutments. Okay. Thank so you. I'll send a photo since we're talking. This, this is actually our temporary structure. Um, this is our temporary bridge that the county owns. So that's in place now. We simply ran out of uh, season, you know, with the stream restrictions. So the project is, is shut down for the winter and will be back up and going in the spring. And that's our temporary structure that will be pulled out once the, once the new bridge is in. Okay, are we ready for the question? All those in favor say aye. Mm -hmm. aye. Aye. Opposed? Carry. On page 19 is a, a list of our end of year and end of construction season transfers. So we'll see various uh, road project <coughs> salaries and internal equipment rentals where we are applying uh, various expenses to various projects. <coughs> Would someone like to move that? Supervisor Frazier, seconded by Supervisor McDonald. Any discussion? Yeah. Need some more time? <coughs> hey, Jeff, on some of these um, part time to overtime, this is just this, this project. When you do these projects, do you plan out the number of hours? No. So you don't, you don't plan out the labor. So you just take it from the other code. Yeah, so as they're used, we move it from the maintenance of roads code over into the actual project. So we account for the overall project expense. Area. But it's just it's accounted for under our core budget, operations budgets. Any other questions? Okay, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. The next item on the agenda was to discuss <coughs> an authorization to settle a lawsuit. Is this what we need to do? Yeah, let me um, just ask if there's anybody from the public that has anything to... Before you go into executive... Yes. Uh, can we go to privileges for Sure. Um, the issue I wanted to bring up was one of oversight on the DPW. There have been a number of instances uh, where permits were required by law and these permits have not been, either not been sought or have not been followed. And the most recent example is uh, a stormwater permit that was never uh, gotten for this emergency access road. 
My concern is uh, in a permit like that, I, I talked to Craig Brown in the town of Queensbury, and he said, you know, yes, typically he would be uh, making sure those permits were issued, but this is the county. Because it's the county, you just give them a pass, evidently. Which, you know, if the county deserved a pass, that would be one thing. But when it's found that they do not follow the rules, then I think that, uh, you know, there needs to be some oversight. And I can't find out who is, uh, you know, providing that oversight. Um, this is a, a situation where there were about two acres of disturbed ground. Um, I happened to be on them, you know, at the balloon festival as they allowed, uh, you know, thousands of cars over that emergency road. Uh, to access the, uh, the airport, and there was no silk fencing, there was no permit, uh, you know, in a mailbox, but you should have there, you know, showing that the stormwater permit was issued, etc. Uh, but this pales in comparison to the uh, problem that came up earlier this year, when the uh, uh, our our consultant at the airport went ahead and wrote to the DPW, not DPW, the uh, DEC. Uh, asking Mr. Edinger, the, the uh, uh, fellow that uh, really looks at the Marl Fan and other such uh, critical areas around the state, and the question was asked that, you know, geez, since this thing has been flooded for the several months, is it even a Marl Fan anymore? Because, you know, when you have surface water into a feature that is fed from underground, it's certainly going to uh, change the conditions there. Uh, I think to their disappointment, Mr. Edinger said, you know what, that thing is still fine, it's still good. But it raises the question why it was flooded for months and months, particularly when there is an order of consent that was written in 1987 by the DEC uh, after they put in a very large amount of fines against uh, the Earltown development. And uh, on for that very piece of property, that very piece of property was later taken by the county for taxes, because evidently Mr. Laxco said, well, I'm never going to be able to do anything with this uh, because of all these environmental concerns. But it says right in the order of consent that uh, all successors, uh, you know, on that property are, uh, you know, must follow the order's consent. In, in there, uh, there were evidently drainage ditches. There are different drainage ditches that were made uh, quite some time ago. And those have weirs in them to control the flow. Well, the, uh, evidently the beaver population has taken advantage of the work done by humans, you know, back, you know, 20 years ago, whatever, and decided it's a lot easier to dam up like, you know, a six-foot stretch than, you know, a 60-foot stretch or whatever, and that's what they've been doing, and that area has been flooded for quite a period of time. I know I talked to Mr. Dubery about it, and he says that the, uh, that there are people in the DPW department there that like to call that area Lake Dubery. So um, it is uh, causing uh, a concern to me, and, and the concern was raised to the DEC that perhaps this is damaging the moral fence. And uh, I don't know why, you know, the county would not also be subject to following those same conditions that Mr. Laxo was uh, told to follow. So, and, you know, in them they say he must be, specifically it says the weir heights must be maintained. So, um, you know, my, my complaint in general is that uh, on this, and, and uh, well, there's another one with regards to an undisturbed vegetative buffer on Queensbury Avenue, which was never, was specifically uh, stated in the permit to, you know, be maintained, and yet it was clear cut along with everything else, they placed a couple of bushes along the, you know, some uh, you know, some months later, certainly not undisturbed. And um, so my point in general is that, you know, who is providing oversight for for this department that has a history of uh, you know non-compliance? And if they need oversight, then I I'd like to get oversight on that. And uh, I have already sent this complaint to Mr. Conover. I've sent the complaint certainly to Mr. Tennyson. Uh, the FAA is aware of it. Um, there are lawyers in the area that are now aware of it. I, you know, it is it, it, it's, it's quite a question to me how the uh, county can go ahead and say we'd like to be take lead agency status on making all the decisions down there on on the environmental concerns associated with that runway extension when they have such a pitiful record of uh, adhering 
to conditions that are set uh, on that. And, and that's the point I'd like to make. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Jeff, who would, um, who provides oversight for these stormwater permits or any other? Well, the, the, it varies. The, um, I mean, the, some of the projects have outside consulting, um, but, you know, as far as the beaver, the beaver population, we continually trap and remove beaver dams, but they come back. <laughs> so it's so I mean, like, like the access road. Travis had mentioned the access. Yeah, we did. We did that in house. We did coordinate through Army Corps and uh, DEC. You know, frankly, that was a, a simple oversight by both of those agencies and and my staff. We've since been talking with them continually about okay. And we've been out to the site with them and said, all right, what do you want us to do now? And is there anything that you want, that you know any impacts you've seen that we need to mitigate? There's been, there was no impacts. Um, you know, no negative impacts by the lack of there being silt fence or anything. So we've been talking with them about, okay, what do you want us to do now? We can't go back in time. I wish we could, but it was a simple oversight, and we're in constant communication with DEC on rectifying the situation. If anything, I mean, they, they've been out to the site and said, well, there's really no impacts to the lack of silt fence. The project was pretty straightforward, and, it, and it's surrounded by cornfields, so there's not a lot of it's not a lot of damage that can be done out there. Um, so we we continue that communication with with the the environmental uh, oversight agencies, and we'll see what they want us to do on that project. Yeah. Jeff, was that a case where you widen the road? They want it a little bit the, wider, or no? We did we did go back in and and widen the, widen the road uh, through discussions with DEC. Some areas needed additional fill of, of that, the mill. I mean, it was, a, it was a few feet? Was it yeah, few we feet? basically added a few feet on each, on each end sense. to give us a little bit more flexibility. In, in, um, and they didn't find us or anything for the work? No, no. And they've been out to the site since. So, okay. you know, they're, they, they're saying, yeah, um, yeah, it turns out that you were over the threshold, so we're communicating with them and saying, all right, what do you want us to do? Yeah. We've had DEC out there, we've had soil and water out there with us, saying, okay, we can't go back in time, but what do you want us to do now? And you should sit with the responsible parties and say, next time we need to just follow these steps. Yeah, and, and I've talked with staff about it, and, and you know, they, they acknowledged that, yep, it was missed, and okay, so now we're fixing it. If there's anything to fix, but there's again, there was no negative impacts. There was no, uh, there's not like a smoking gun where you go out there and you see a big problem with anything that was done. It was just okay. It was a technical oversight, and we'll end up working with DEC to resolve it. Mr. Chairman, yeah. um, <coughs> I'm not a big fan of the the curtains. As you know, Jeff, uh, we keep a roll of the 12 inch. Um, Stormwater tubes uh, that come in the roll on the pallet, and uh, I've found we have found that um, because on the curtain uh, it's very manual, it's very labor intensive to install them. Half the time they're not installed correctly. The first storm you get, they tend to get knocked down, so you get a lot of maintenance going on. And since we moved to the tubes, those 12 inch tubes, you can get them in eight or ten. You can get them so they biodegrade right in place, uh, so that um, it's. I found on our project that I don't even have to mention storm water. It's, 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 they know now if they're doing a cut or a ditch or whatever, boom, that you can see the tube that's there. You cut to the length you want, you tie it off, you set it down. You don't even have, in most instances, you don't even have to stake it in place. It's heavy enough to, to set right in place. And, and the other thing is <coughs> um, on, the, um, on the cuts, this gets, it's always important, but it's particularly important where you have rivers and lakes and environmental assets like that were mentioned um, that when you do a cut there should be a we, you should know when the, when the hydro seeding is coming in no cut should should languish more than a certain period of time yeah, and, um, and, it, and if that's the case you shouldn't be making the cut until you know that hydro seed is going to be there and you're going to get new growth going as soon as possible so I think you know Although they get awfully heavy, if they get wet, you know, 
those tubes. Uh, I would really recommend if you don't already have them. I think you did use tubes on um, Trout Lake Road. Uh, the contractor <coughs> was doing that deep cut on that road. He used them, and they were very, very effective. So I think the, you know it never hurts to go back and take a look at your stormwater policies, including hydro seeding. So take a little bit of time so that your managers know you know that uh, this is the preferred stormwater tool to be used uh, to uh, uh, keep the runoff from picking up velocity and that the procedure is that within so many days of a cut, you know, hydro seeder needs to be on site um, doing what it's supposed to be doing and it does make a difference. So I just will put that out there as a recommendation that a little, a little bit more expensive but I think they have great applications. And even the ones that don't biodegrade in place, it doesn't take anything to come along after the seed is taken place. You cut it, you pull the fabric, you just rake it, and you're done. The old, the old fabric <coughs> curtains are, I think, um, at least I, I think, a, a, a much less desirable application of them, and less versatile, and more labor intensive. Pay a little more for the tubes, but it's a lot less labor. Josh, I could. I don't really think the issue that I was trying to make was whether or not the law is, you know, correct or not correct and whether, you know, one method should be used versus another. The fact is that in the real world, people like myself don't get a chance to go ahead and say I'm going to pay attention to this law and not pay attention to that law. And I can't come to you and say, you know, I was dead drunk on the north way going 150 miles an hour, but no one got killed. So, you know, there's no problem there. That's not, that, you know, there are laws there for a reason and they should be followed, and if there's no oversight, if I knew there was never a cop on the Northway, I'll bet you that, you know, the, the average speed on there would be, you know, at least 10, 20 miles an hour higher than it is today, and we'd have a lot more deaths. There are reasons for laws that need to be enforced, and that's the point I was trying to make. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, is there anything? Yeah, I know, I just wanted to. Is there anything further from the God? I know you haven't gotten to it, but I got a question on the overtime. In September, about 1,400 hours. I think it uh, hasn't been that high since 2011. Yet. Yeah, that, that would include uh, Balloon Fest as well and then in which we had a beautiful we had a beautiful weekend so we didn't we did long days at Balloon Fest. So I think that had some impact and then we've had a good string of weather so all of our road projects. So I mean that's where I think the uh, I think that's where probably your your blip has been. Between the normal balloon fest and a and a beautiful weekend for that that, that did extend our hours and then um, a good stretch of weather for end of season construction projects. Well I see you've been mowing beside the road yet on Yeah, we've been we've been falling behind on the roadside mowing, so I've authorized some overtime on that. I just don't have the staff to do it during normal normal hours. I've got the guys on road projects, you know, during the day, and then staying. Those that want to stay late can can do a few hours of mowing in the evening or in the afternoons. So that that has actually that was you know both this year and last year we just had such a growing uh, roadside. Growth has just been out of control. Um, yeah, just a few other items, I guess, before we go into executive. I do have some photos to pass around. One of um, Valley Woods Road uh, paving project, and then another one is a, a bridge painting project. That was a federal aid project for the South Oregon Bridge. Um, already sent around the Patton Aram Road Temporary Bridge and then I have the uh, fuel usage report attached as well. <coughs> so, the in so as far as uh, going in into executive, we're going into an executive to discuss? Uh, two things. We're going to um, go into the executive session to discuss uh, current litigation and also the a particular employee. Of a particular employee. Motion by Supervisor Sokol. 
by Supervisor McDonald. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those carried. There is no action taken in uh, executive session. So we do need a motion to accept the settlement offer from the insurance company regarding the accident involving damage to a county vehicle. Someone would like to move that? Supervisor Sokol, seconded by, seconded by anybody? Supervisor Frazier? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Okay, anything further? Motion to adjourn. Supervisor McDonald, second by Supervisor Merlino. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. You want your agenda? Yeah.